what the heck is going on in today's job market? Because it seems like every time I turn on the news or log into LinkedIn, another major corporation is announcing a layoff. And I know that there are people out there who are wondering whether or not their name is gonna be next. So in this video, I wanna cover some signs that you're about to get laid off. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to share with you some signs that you're about to get laid off. But before we get too far into it, if you're interested in more career-related videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You might also wanna hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future posts. Now, I know that there's some people out there who are very anxious about the condition of the labor market. As you know, I talk about the pendulum swinging back and forth. In 2020, the pendulum was firmly buried on the employer side, and there was a ton of layoffs due to the pandemic. And as we exited the pandemic, the pendulum swung fiercely to the other side. And as we came out of the pandemic, employers ramped up their hiring and we swung firmly in the other side. And it's been a very employee driven market for about the last 18 months to two years. However, there is some trouble that's been brewing on the horizon. And you, again, you can't log into LinkedIn without seeing all of these major layoffs being announced. And it does get some people wondering whether or not their name is gonna be called next for a potential layoff or reduction in force. And if you're not thinking about it, maybe now is the time to start putting some thought into whether or not you're vulnerable and if you should be taking some action to protect yourself. Now, I made another video recently about signs that the company that you're working for may be preparing to lay off, but this one is gonna be focused more on you as the individual. If a company lays off, if a company is gonna be laying off 10 to 15% of their workforce or potentially even more, it's not necessarily guaranteed that your name is gonna be on that list. So this video is gonna focus on why your name might get added to that list and you might get that pink slip. So if you're interested in more of those signs about your company getting prepared, check out that other video. I will leave a link for it. Now the first sign kind of encompasses what that other video said and it's that your company is experiencing some turmoil. Now turmoil can come in a lot of different shapes and formats, but specifically if your company is experiencing an economic downturn, maybe the business that they're operating in isn't quite as profitable or maybe they've lost a lot of customers or there's been some major disruption to their business model. I'm thinking Twitter, for example, where Elon Musk came in, shook everything up, and they went from being a viable business to potentially on the verge of bankruptcy almost immediately. Now, obviously that's a drastic example, but if you're in an industry that is vulnerable to changing market conditions, you should be paying close attention to that. I'm thinking housing, for example, where the market for housing has gone through the roof, and then with a rising interest rates, suddenly the market kind of is going off of a cliff. If you're in a company that supports the housing industry, you might wanna pay close attention to what your business is doing because once demand falls to the floor, companies are going to be looking for cost cutting measures. And that's a surefire sign that if you work in one of those industries that you should be really careful about what your next steps are. Now taking that a step further, if you work in a company that is particularly at risk and you work in a job type that is not mission critical, you should also be paying close attention to what your company is doing. Look for those red flags and those warning signs and start to prepare yourself in the event that they look at your department or your role specifically. Generally speaking, if you're in a non-revenue generating role, you could be potentially at risk. Now let's take recruiting for example. Recruiting is always last to get hired and first to get fired. And that's because they don't necessarily drive revenue. So the more mission critical your role is, the less susceptible you'll be to a potential reduction in force. Alternatively, a role that doesn't necessarily affect revenue generation is gonna be looked at with more scrutiny. And so if you're in a department that doesn't add enough value to the bottom line of the business, you should be paying close attention to that. And how do we know that our department adds value? Well, the simple question is, does your department generate revenue? And if so, how much revenue do they generate? Is it a significant portion of the business's sales? If it's a smaller portion of the business's sales and it's not particularly profitable revenue, then you might be susceptible because as companies start to scale back on cost, they start to look at non-mission critical roles, departments, products, and services, and they decide how they wanna strategically focus their business. For example, you're working on a new product that hasn't gotten to market yet, I would be very cautious about whether or not you wanna expose yourself to additional risk by going out and buying new cars and getting new mortgages and things like that. I would be learning how to write my resume and keeping my networks nice and fresh. And another way to tell that your department is adding value is whether or not the work has been cut. If your work is still being carried on in a difficult economic climate, then it's probably a good indicator that your company values what your department does. 
and hopefully you're in a role inside of that department that is also mission critical. Because I've personally been in jobs where suddenly the departmental work all comes to a screeching halt, there's a hiring freeze, and we're all just patiently waiting for what's next. And typically during this period of time, they may put you on some value adding projects to try to keep you busy so they can see where the market is heading. And unfortunately, if the market is not heading anywhere positive, that might be an indicator that they're gonna pull the plug and that your position could be eliminated. And if they look at your department specifically, they're gonna be looking at people whose skills are differentiated, unique, and hard to replace. So if you look at your current skill set and you measure it against your coworkers and even more broadly against the market in general, that should give you a good litmus test for how valuable you are to the department because companies will be more reluctant to lay off or remove somebody who has a very difficult skill set to replace on the open market. So if you're in a job type and you realize that your skills maybe aren't up to snuff, I would be actively working to try to upskill and make sure that you have the most current marketable skills. Now, taking that a step further, if you're gapping on some skills compared to your coworkers and you're more expensive than the others, you could be certain that your name is gonna get circled on a spreadsheet because that's what companies will do. They will look at who's adding the most value or alternatively, who's adding the least value for the amount of money that they're spending and then they'll determine how mission critical is that role. And unfortunately, if you don't pass that litmus test, your name gets added to a spreadsheet and those people on the spreadsheet, unfortunately, are usually the ones who get the pink slip. So if you're somebody that has negotiated a really nice pay increase for yourself over the last 18 months, just make sure that your skills are the most current and the most cutting edge in your department and your contribution matches or reflects how much you're getting paid. And another good indicator that you might be on that dreaded spreadsheet is if you're no longer invited to meetings that you once were. If suddenly you're pulled off of some projects or you're no longer invited to some mission critical meetings that you are a key component in, you can look at that as a sign that you're either being replaced or being eliminated. Now it's important to note that just because you got pulled off of a project does not automatically mean that you're gonna get laid off. It's just an indicator. But generally speaking, when you're being prepared to be downsized, your boss will be looking at the kind of work that you're involved with and starting to put contingency plans in place, whether it's consolidating projects, moving somebody else from a different department or different part of your department into your role, or potentially even stepping in themselves to take on your responsibilities. And that could be potentially them setting themselves up to live without you in that role. Now, if it's just a project, that's one thing, but if all of your work is suddenly being redistributed and you're being asked to train other people or potentially write standard operating procedures for work that you do on a daily basis, that might be a huge red flag that you're being prepared to be replaced. Or worse, they could be determining whether or not your position is actually needed. Now, a meeting with the Bobs in office space comes to mind when I think about this, but essentially you may be asked to justify why you're there. So if you're meeting with your boss's boss and they're being asked pointed questions about what you do during your day to day, that's a huge red flag that you're being prepared to be downsized. And if it's a project, that's one thing, but if it's multiple projects or potentially a larger part of your work, buyer beware. And this is especially true if there's others in your department who can do your work or you're asked to train somebody else to do your work. So if you work in a department with a lot of people who do similar type of work to you and you're the most expensive or maybe you're not outputting enough, then you could be looked at as somebody that's replaceable ending up on a spreadsheet and somebody else in your department could be taking over your job. Now the person who's taking over your job is probably not gonna be super thrilled about it, but it is what it is and that's what happens in big business. The next major warning sign that you should be looking for is whether or not your performance is lacking. And you should know pretty well whether or not your performance is up to par in your department. Most of us in our day-to-day -day job are measured by some sort of metric or certain measurable output. And you can usually tell how you're doing based on your measurement against that metric. There's things called KPIs, they're key performance indicators. And those key performance indicators are a good litmus test for whether or not you're keeping pace with the rest of the department. And in fact, managers will tend to look at KPIs across their broader organization and then start to circle people who are trending lower than the rest of the group. Those are usually the people who will get the pink slip when there comes time for a layoff. So if you wanna stay off that dreaded spreadsheet, make sure that your KPIs, your performance, and your output is well above the bar. And another thing to look at in the performance context is how did your most recent performance appraisals go? If you're somebody that's on the lower end of the performance spectrum, you just got a barely meets expectations, or even worse, somebody that doesn't meet expectations, 
you should be really cautious about whether or not your name is going to end up on that spreadsheet because that's generally the people that they'll look at first is poor performers. Now, I'm going to make a blanket statement here and say not all people that get laid off are poor performers, but those are generally people who are included in that group of people who get laid off. So if you know that your performance numbers aren't up to snuff or the numbers that are being reported are not accurate, you need to be very chirpy about that. Make sure that everybody who needs to know knows that your numbers are not accurate and keep your own spreadsheet, track your own data and send it over to them as part of your justification for why the numbers aren't meeting expectations. Because once your name is added to that spreadsheet and you're put on the termination list, it's really too late to go and try to justify your numbers. It's better to do that upfront and make sure that you stay on top of it. And if you're struggling in your performance, I would absolutely recommend that you have regular one-on-one -on -one syncs with your boss so that you can try to understand where you sit and what you need to do to improve it to make sure that you're irreplaceable. So that leads us to the next red flag is that you're somebody that has potentially scaled back your work to doing the bare minimum. And I know there's this whole thing about quiet quitting out there and it's very charged and people are very passionate about doing what they're paid to do. And I totally agree with that. Um, however, this is talking to the person who has scaled back to the bare minimum. I'm talking the person who just wiggles a mouse and is doing just enough to barely not get noticed. And let's face it, your boss probably knows that you've scaled back to doing next to nothing because they're looking at KPIs and KPIs, the numbers don't lie. So if suddenly your numbers went from here down to here and the rest of your team is in the middle somewhere, your name is going to get circled and you probably know what your performance output is. So if you're somebody that has strategically scaled back because of a variety of reasons, nobody's here to judge you for it, but just know that you might want to choose your timing carefully because as companies start to lay off, they are looking for people who are not driving the value. So my suggestion would be to bring your performance up to at least the average of the group, if not above average, during this period of time of economic uncertainty. And if you can differentiate yourself with some of those unique skills and abilities that makes you harder to replace, even better. And the last major sign that I wanna cover in today's video is if you're somebody that doesn't have a good visible relationship with not only your boss, but your boss's boss. If you're somebody that's a wallflower who doesn't participate in meetings and nobody seems to really know who you are because you keep to yourself, you're particularly introverted, now might be the time to try to come out of your show a little bit and get more well known and potentially even look at skip level meetings. So meet with your boss's boss, try to get involved with some projects so that your name is more visible. The more visible your name is to your boss, your boss's boss, your boss's boss's boss, the less likely it is that you'll end up on a spreadsheet and a number as part of a layoff because you'll be a known commodity rather than just a name on a spreadsheet. And when those tough decisions get made, it's a better chance for you to avoid having your name on the list. Listen, I know that this kind of information is a little difficult to hear, especially in a time where a lot of people are experiencing layoffs, but it is better to be prepared than to be caught off guard and scrambling in the event that you have an adverse employment decision happen against you. So you should be taking the precautions necessary in order to stay one step ahead. Make sure that you know how to write a solid resume and keep your resume up to date. If you don't know how to do that, I have a course called Resume Rocket Fuel, which teaches you exactly how to write a resume that is recruiter approved and is going to give you the best chance of getting noticed for that first round interview. And once you get noticed for that first round interview, then you wanna make sure that you can sell yourself throughout the rest of the interviewing process. You don't wanna wait till you're laid off and trying to figure out all of these other stressful things in addition to how to sell yourself when you do land another interview. So the Ultimate Job Seeker Bootcamp teaches you how to navigate through each step of that interview process and to ultimately land the dream offer. Another thing that I would recommend is that you look at your networks and now is the time to be building active networks rather than waiting until you're laid off and trying to scramble for them. And if you're not sure how to build meaningful networks that actually get you interviews, make sure you check out my Unlocking LinkedIn course. It's gonna teach you how to reach out to the right people at the right time to actually generate interviews and get you through the interview process ahead of the person who's just applying for a job. It's also gonna teach you how to access the hidden job market. So it's a really good resource if you just don't know where to go with your networking. All right, so I hope this video was valuable for you. I know that this kind of information can be a little bit tough to get through, especially in a time where there's a lot of layoffs happening. But the purpose of it is to make you educated so that you can look around and make some realistic changes to your situation so that you can start making proactive steps.
because ultimately you're the free agent of your career and you're the only one looking out for you. And as always, if you like this video and got some value out of it, would appreciate a thumbs up, potentially even a comment because that engagement really does help support me continuing to do what I do and also to get this message out to others who might actually need to hear what I have to say. And if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you watching and we will see you on the next one.